So this got to be a very weird time to be a young man, because if you watch TV, they present a young man as a silly, funny, everybody makes fun of them weak. So you're like, maybe that's how I'm supposed to be as a young man. So that's how I'm going to get the attention, because that's who the hero is on TV. And then you listen to music, it's a complete different portrayal of what it is to be a young man, to be cool. So what is the right of being a young man? I'm going to give you today 20 rules of what it is to be a young man in today's times. <music> So if today's episode gives you good perspective, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Stick around till the very end, I got a surprise for you. So let's get right into it. Point number one, know the difference between lust and love. There's a big difference between love and lust. When you're young, you tend to fall in love quick. And whenever you fall in love, you lose your emotions, you lose your mind. You don't really know what you're doing, but it's just maybe somebody you dated with a sex was great. Just maybe somebody you dated with, there's a great connection in the bedroom or whatever it may be. You have a certain level of connection together, right? And that may confuse you on this may be the person that I ought to be with for the rest of my life. But marriage, love, long-term relationship is a very big difference between a great, good time you had with somebody. I had relationships in the past where I was confused. I thought this is it, but it was just great, one aspect of the life. And then eventually later on, you start taking your time and you say, wait a minute, I'm just having a good time with this person. This is not somebody I'm going to end up with. But for current time, I'm having a good time. Great. So you have to differentiate between those two. Many young men make a mistake in that area. Number two, it's okay to go to movies by yourself. I like to go to movies by myself because it allows me to think. It's a form of me almost meditating. It's a form of me being by myself, thinking about my own thoughts, what I'm doing next. For you, it may not be meditating. For you, it may be a different thing that you're doing, yoga, whatever it is. But in any way, you can figure out a way to get away from the noise. You're by yourself where you can kind of think about what's going on with life. It's a very good thing for young men to do. Too often, it's always around people. You kind of need a little bit of your own time to be thinking about your future. Number three, hygiene is more important than you think. Cologne alone cannot make up for bad body odor. So whether it's when you're younger, you're like, well, I'm just working out. It's not a big deal. You, you got the sweat you know, on your shirts and all this other stuff, and you're not really thinking about it. Yeah, you brush your teeth, but it's like a 20-second brushing your teeth. You know, Yeah, you kind of shave, but you don't really, you're not that much into it. Yeah, you kind of wash your body, but it's like a two-minute shower. You got to kind of take that part very seriously, and I'm talking all aspects of it. Washing, shaving, odor, you know, having the right uh, you know, deodorant to use. All of that package comes together. There's many content and great channels to teach you on how to do this on the hygiene side. But never underestimate the value of hygiene because when somebody sees you and you're presentable, you smell good, you look good in every possible way, you give them the presentation that I take care of myself, that says a lot about your character. Number four, never ever, and I mean never ever, get together with a friend's ex. Never do this. If your friend is dating a girl, Mary, they break up, but Mary calls you, don't ever go get together with Mary. I've seen this happen so many times and ruined so many different friendships. And in our circle, if anybody ever did this, one, you were either out of the circle or you're going to have a problem with me because that's not something that we do in our circle. If, if some, like I remember one time we went to a club and one of our old friends who was in the circle is with one of my best friend's girlfriend. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? It's like, oh, well, she didn't want to be with them. So she wanted to be with me. I said, dude, there's like millions of people in LA, you choose this. What is the matter with you? That's not what you do there. There was a friction there. No one in the group ever trusted him ever again because of that specific reason. Everybody always kept their girl away from him. And eventually he had to go find a different crew. And when he wanted to come back, people just wouldn't trust him. So basic rule, there's millions of other girls out there. Don't go date or hook up with a friend's ex just because they call you and they say, when we would go have coffee together and we'd go to the club, I always watched you because I always wanted to be with you. If your friendship matters that much, don't cross that line. Five, stay informed on what's going on. Don't be a sheep. Have your own opinion. There's certain, certain things about when I talk to somebody who's 20 years old or 22 years old and you talk to them and they say, well, I know this is what's being said here, but I wonder what's going on really over here because I read this book and they told me that, 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 I'm like, wow, a 21 year old with an opinion like that. Good for you. So be informed, follow what's going on. Don't be a sheep. Have your own opinions about it and say it in a way that doesn't offend anybody. Number six, have a sense of humor but don't joke about your dreams and goals. So you want to tell a joke? Great. If people don't laugh at your jokes, you're probably not good at telling jokes. So go learn how to tell a good joke because it's good to have a sense of humor, break the ice, but never joke about your goals. Yeah. You know, one day I'm going to end up being an actor. <laughs> we know that's never going to happen. Yeah. That's not funny. Don't do that. It's your dreams. It's your goals. You don't need to joke about your dreams and goals. If you're serious about your dreams and goals, don't let anybody around you joke about your 
dreams and goals because that's your goals. I remember one time, I'm 24, uh, year, 23 years old. My first five business ventures fail. And we're out with a few friends. And this one guy, I'll never forget him. One guy starts joking about, hey, we thought you were going to be this and we thought you were going to be that. And he was joking. And I look at him, I felt so uncomfortable because at 23, I had failed multiple times in businesses. And I just stopped him right there. I said, listen, I'm sorry. Is this a joke to you? You said you want to be a lawyer. Yes. Do I laugh about you being a lawyer? No. So don't laugh about me being a business owner. And he said, well, I'm just kidding with you. I said, don't kid, kid about my dreams. And in that moment, I felt, listen, I'm serious about what I want to do with my life. And everybody else had to feel it. Fast forward 19 years later, look where we are today. So have a sense of humor, joke around, but not about your dreams and goals. Next, study the types of people who upset you and why. So for the longest time, I would say, well, I keep dating the same kind of girl. Why? I didn't know until eventually I started. I'm like, okay, now it makes sense why I'm dating this girl. And I'm like, I'm always having conflicts with these types of personalities. Why? And I'm like, oh, I totally got it. This person didn't do anything wrong. This person reminds you of X, Y, Z. It's not their fault. Next time this happens, be aware that this is the reason why you don't get along with this person. But then there were certain things that when I came across somebody, I didn't like them. And I studied why I didn't like them. It was valid because they were manipulators, because they were divisive, because they were the kind of people that would tell you good things in front of you. And the moment you turned around and then five other people said, you know what he really said about you? And like one person didn't say, two didn't say. And you saw how he would talk trash about everybody in his family, friends, peers in front of you. If somebody does that to you, guess who's next? You're next. So study why you get along with certain people and why you don't. Some of it has to do with your flaws. Some of it is for valid reason, but it's not all the same. You can't say, well, because that person's a bad person. Nope, that's an alibi you're using to make yourself feel better about yourself. Study why that happens with you. Next, stand up to bullies. You'll only have to do it once. This is not something that you're going to have to do 50 times. You're not going to get into 1,000 fights. You're not going to get into 50 fights. But if bullies always bully and you don't do anything about it, you're probably going to get into a lot of fights. And it's not really fights. It's just people bullying you. Until one time, you stand up to a bully, and then you have a reputation. Not as a tough guy, as somebody that doesn't back down. But you only got to do it once. Next, don't bully people weaker than you. Sometimes when you become stronger, let's say you have more power, more money, more influence, you lift more weights, whatever it is. You're, out of, you're dating better, you know, you're doing, you're the guy, or you're, you know, the one with the uh, influence. Don't, don't impose and bully other guys that are weaker than you just because you're making yourself feel better. It's a very weak quality. It shows there's deeper insecurities there. There's no need to do that. If you are the person that's doing well, be confident, stand up. Don't let other people poke at you. But at the same time, don't impose your success and all that stuff on other people. It's not a good move. It shows insecurities. Next, learn how to tell stories. In the world of business and life, many times if you want to make your point, the best way to make a good point is by telling stories. Learn how to tell a good story. There's many books you can read about how to tell a good story on the format of it. But learn how to tell good stories. As a matter of fact, I got a video I did on how to tell good stories. If you've never seen it, uh, the link is over here as well. And we're going to put the link below as well. Let's continue. Number 11, don't lean on porn to get better in bed. Read, study. And I'm not trying to be funny with you. I know some people will say, well, Pat, I'm visual. I'm a visual type of person. That's why I watch porn because I learn how to get better in bed by watching a lot of porn. I totally get it. I was in the army and, you know, on our floor, second floor, if I came back to the barracks at 7 o'clock, all I heard on blast is, uh, all I heard on blast, Sergeant, on this side, that guy's bracking, he's got the best VHS, this guy's bracking, there's 10 guys in the room watching. This was a military thing. Everybody was doing it. And listen, I get it if you're going through it, but the way sex is done in porn many times is not the best way to please, and you kind of look like a fool when you try to test those things out in the bedroom. Versus, I understand exploring, but there's also things you can read about to find out what areas work better than other areas. There's great content, great books on that. Take the time. You don't need to advertise on 10 best books on how to get better in bed, but go. there's plenty of content out there on how to learn how to do that. Don't let porn be your teacher. Let books be your teacher on how to actually get good in that area. Next. Okay, number 12. You never marry a girl, you marry the family. So if you're dating a girl and you don't get along with the family, but you like the girl, you love the girl, but the family's a mess, you have to make sure that part's also right. Because the moment you guys have kids together or other issues that come up, she's going to call the family. And if you don't get along with the family, the family's not going to back you up. And then there's going to be a separation constant. My parents got two divorces in 20 years. Neither family liked each other. My mom's family didn't like my dad's family. My dad's family didn't like my mom's family. They thought it was going to work out. 
didn't work out. So always remember, if you're dating a girl and if it's somebody you want to be with long term, make sure you kind of like the family as well. And if you maybe you don't like the family because they don't know yet, or maybe you don't like them because you don't know them yet, create that opportunity to get to know each other. But if there's not a connection there, you're probably going to end up having a problem with these guys for a long time. So be patient with it. Stay strong. Don't give up, but strive to find out for the, uh, learn more about the family. And if it doesn't work out, it's going to be problems in the future. Number 13, don't complain. You seem helpless. 80% of people, quite frankly, don't care you have problems. 20% of people are kind of glad you do have problems. You have friends and family that are glad that you have problems. When you're always complaining, it's an unattractive quality because what you're telling the world is, I'm helpless. I'm helpless. I don't know how to help myself. Please. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Don't complain constantly. It's a weak move. You seem helpless. It doesn't mean you don't talk to your peers and say, I'm dealing with something. I'm struggling with something. I'm not telling you to internalize it and not be vulnerable and talk to your peers. But if you're always complaining around other people, it's a very, very weak move on your end. Number 14, be impressed by the right things, things that matter. A lot of times, people will be impressed by the wrong things. Oh, this guy's got nice jewelry. This guy's got nice this. This guy's got nice cars. This guy's got nice that. Don't get me wrong. I like the Ferrari. I like the Lambo, the Rolls Royce. I like, I've had all those exotics. I like all of those things. But what impressed me is, wow, this guy's had... 100 people that have been working with them for 50 years? Why? What, what does that say about this guy's character? What do you do to keep people that long? Wow, this guy's kids love him and want to be around him all the time. What is he doing? Wow, look at this person. He's so disciplined. The way he teaches, talks to waiters and waitresses. I like to be impressed by those things. The other stuff is ancillary stuff that you'll get if you become successful. When you become impressed by that, you also become a man of character. And eventually, that's going to serve you in many different aspects of life. Number 15, when coming across a successful person, don't talk too much. Ask. Don't talk too much. You know, a lot of times, like, well, let me tell you, oh, my gosh, you're my hero. Oh, my God. Oh, you won't even know understand. It's like, very simple. Hey, love your story. Very impressed with what you've done. I appreciate you. You mind if I ask you a couple questions? Yeah. When you were my age, what was the biggest struggle you had? Ask questions. Because that person's going to walk away saying, wow, that guy is, that guy is very inquisitive. That guy's asking questions. Who is that guy? I think that guy's going places. Versus the other guys that are just talking, 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 talking. The person that asks a question, the other person walks away saying, I'm impressed by that person. Number 16, have a memorable style. I'm not telling you to wear a suit, but if that's your style, wear it. Yeah, I'm not telling you to wear white shirts or whatever, but have a unique style about yourself. If it's a hat, wear that hat. If it's certain glasses, wear it. If you have a certain shoe or certain way you do things, have a memorable style because when people see you, they're going to say, man, every time I see that guy, that guy's got style. Your style. Figure out what your style is and make it memorable. Next, 17, don't feel guilty for being ambitious. I remember I would talk about my dreams and some people are like, man, you know what? Whatever. I mean, who cares about this and who cares about this? I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know, it's like, I'm like, wait, what am I doing? No, 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 no. I'm ambitious. This is who I am. I'm wired this way. I'm not going to apologize for this. Be proud if you're ambitious. Don't apologize if you have big ambitions in life. Number 18, be mentally and emotionally ready for losing loved ones. This is a tough one. My dad prepared me for this at six years old. When uh, he, uh, we went for a walk, Iran, we were getting bombed all the time. So he kind of wanted to prepare me because where he was working was getting bombed pretty bad. And he said, you know, one day I'm going to die. I said, Why, what do you mean one day you're going to die? I'm six years old. Think about this. He said, one day I'm going to die. I said, Dad, I don't want to talk about this. He says, one day I'm going to die and you have to be happy about it. I said, I'm not going to be happy about it. You're my best friend. What do you mean you're going to die? He says, no, one day I'm going to die. And you have to know, at least you had those amount of years with me. So you have to be grateful. I said, you mean to tell me if your mom, I know you love your mom. Your mom dies, you're going to be happy? He says, I'm absolutely going to be happy. I said, I don't believe you. Fast forward, my, his mom died at 72 years old. And I'm like a hawk watching him, right? This was uh, in 2000 and, uh, 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 2000, maybe 1999 or 2000 when she passed away, so 11 years ago. And I was in my late 20s, and I watch him, late 20s, early 30s, and I watch him. And I see him, seeing what this guy's going to do. Uh, not late 20s, I'm in my early 20s, and I'm watching him. I'm like, let's see what happens. He goes, mom's dying. He's got tears coming down, but he's got a smile on his face. So why are you smiling? He says, do you realize I had a mom with me for freaking 60-something years? I'm the luckiest man alive. And he was telling all these happy stories about his mom. You have to mentally and emotionally be ready that you're going to lose loved ones. You're in your 20s. Maybe not in your 20s, but it's going to happen. But the more mentally and emotionally you're ready for it, it will not destroy you when it happens. Not you will not be hurt. Of course you're going to be hurt. These are loved ones. But life's going to suck at times. And it's going to suck in a major way. 
And if you're not mentally and emotionally prepared and spiritually prepared for it, sometimes that phase of sucking, rather than lasting for a week, a month or two months or three months, sometimes it lasts a year, two years, three years, and it destroys a great young man's life with a big potential. So I know it's not the most exciting topic to talk about, but I'm trying to mentally and emotionally get you ready to be thinking about some of those thoughts. So let's continue. Next, number 19, always have some cash, condoms, and a power bank with you. Uh, cash, because things are going to come up. Uh, condoms, because you don't ever want to make a mistake. And next thing you know, you're looking back saying, why did I do that? And power bank, because if something happens to you, car breaks down, something you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you don't know how to you know, charge your battery, it's always good to have a power bank because either you or somebody else is probably going to need it. Number 20, be aware of uh, your level of sensitivities. And here, let me explain to you what I mean by this. Last 20 years, I started off as a 22-year-old and I worked my way up, 21, 22-year-old, and I worked my way up to where I'm at right now. I watched a lot of my young friends who were also like me growing up, 22-year-old, 23-year-old men, who were sensitive if somebody challenged them too much, who, who did not control their sensitivities. And I would watch my sensitivity. I'm like, I did not like what that guy said. I want to punch him. Like, I would literally, I want to punch him in the face. 22-year-old kid with a lot of temper just got out of the military. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What, what, what did he poke that bothered you? What did he poke that it bothered you, right? So slowly, I'm like, man, that, that area keeps hurting if somebody challenges you. And why is that? Okay, well, why don't we do something about it? But then I watched some of my friends like, I cannot believe that happened. Every single time, the smallest crisis would happen, flight, 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 flight. This relationship didn't work out. Flight, this relation, flight, this job didn't work out. Flight, every single time. Here's what I want to prepare you for. Any relationship, any friendship, any business, any career you take, there's going to be multiple moments of friction. If every time friction happens, you run, you're going to do that for the rest of your life. It's not the friction's fault. It's the way of handling the friction's fault. You got to be aware of what offended you, how sensitive you are. And rather than just, I can't deal with this anymore. And you run away like a little kid. No. If you want to be a grown man, you got to sit there and say, listen, I, what happened the other day bothers me. I want to improve. But there are certain things that made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And I want to talk to you about it. I'm not saying I'm leaving. All I'm saying is, can we figure out a way to improve the situation here? And in that method, progress is made. Freezing, not saying anything, nothing happens. Flight, see so the rest of your life, you're going to run away from problems. But if you fight and you say, can we address this issue? People are going to respect you more and eventually you'll end up being a leader. But that level of sensitivity with this generation, people are too quick to just run away from the problem and challenge they face. And what happens is their friends do the same exact thing. It's a weak move. Don't be that person. 21 and I got four bonuses for you. Regardless of what you get paid an hour, four bucks an hour, which they don't do anymore, it's 720 in America. 10 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks, I don't care. When I worked at Burger King, I worked my tail off. When I worked at Bally's, I worked my tail off. When I was in the army, I worked my tail. I don't care what you paid me. I worked my tail off and that reputation was out there. People would say, dude, I don't care what you paid this guy. This guy's gonna work. He's gonna work his ass off. He's gonna have a great attitude. So because I worked my tail off, because I had a great attitude, opportunities would constantly come my way. We have a promotion for you. We have a promotion for you. We have a promotion for you. We have a sale for you. This client wants to talk to you. The way you handled that client was so impressive. I got another client for you. So it doesn't matter what you're getting paid. Don't pay attention to what you're getting paid. Pay attention to your effort. Pay attention to your attitude. You will be amazed by the amount of opportunities that have come your way. So that's 21 rules for you, but I got a four additional bonus that you have to text the word young men, M-E-N, young men to 310-340-1132. One more time, 310-340-1132. Or if you're international, click on a link below, subscribe to our newsletter. We'll send these 20, 21 rules plus the four additional bonus. And on top of that, I got two other things for you. One is a video I did, uh, I don't know, six years ago, who to marry, how to marry, if that's the phase of your life you're in. Click over to watch that video. And outside of that, the book that I think would help a lot of young men out is a book I wrote a year ago called Your Next Five Moves. If you've not read the book or listened to the audio, click over here to go read the book as well as the audio. It's going to clarify for you on what your next five, 10, 15 moves ought to be. If you got a lot of value, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.